I was so distressed by the brittleness, by the catechistic dogmatism of the way Stalin presented the doctrine, that I decided that I would go back to an earlier adherent, or indeed founder of it, Karl Marx himself. And as it happened, he had recently been resurrected, so it was possible to interview him. I came to his hotel. Mr. Marx? Yes, sit down, sit down. It's very good of you to, to want to talk to me. What can I do for you? Mr. Marx, I'm terribly puzzled. You're talking in a Russian accent. I thought you were German. Well, in a way, you're right. You're right. You've got a point. I was preparing to open my show in Germany. Or, or you know, we had everything ready. Big stage, lots of proletarians, high level of class consciousness, factories, very bad capitalist class, sympathetic middle class, good ideas, newspapers, but it didn't work out. So we had to move the whole show to Russia. And there we had terrible problems. Because in Russia it was mostly peasants. Everywhere I went I said, where can I find some factories, some workers, some exploiters, some capitalists with big cigars. It was just peasants, landowners, feudal lords. So we had to do it there. And, uh, you know, it wasn't very good. It wasn't the scenario we originally intended. It didn't work out. So it was a big disappointment for you? Very disappointment. Very, very disappointment. Look who they got to lead the country there. Lenin, Trotsky, Stalin. Trotsky at least was Jewish. Stalin wasn't even Jewish. You know, I mean, what kind of a thing is it to have Stalin, a man like that? If at least he'd been a nice Jewish boy, he would never have run the country in such a stupid way. What did he get from killing so many people? He was an undertaker or something? I mean, you know, it was ridiculous. Uh, Mr. Mark, so many things have happened since you died. There must be so many surprises, you know, being resurrected like this w when you found out, you know, what's happening. What was the biggest surprise? Very difficult to say. So many surprises. So many inventions. Radio, television, helicopter, automobile, jukebox, many, many surprises. But what was the biggest surprise, Mr. Marx? Of all the surprises, and there were very many, the one thing I would never really imagine, that David O. Selznick would cast Clark Gable in the role of Red Butler in Gone with the Wind. Mr. Marx, I'm surprised you take such a strong interest in the, in the movies. Of course I take an interest. What's so surprising? How could I not be interested in all those beautiful people? Gary Cooper, Rita Hayworth, Carol Lombard, Lassie, Judy Garland, Rin Tin Tin. But how could you take such an interest in... All that, aren't you more concerned about revolutions which are changing our whole society? This shows you have no sense of proportion. You talk about revolutions. What about Technicolor? What about stereophonic sound? What about the time Jimmy Stewart, who was always a dramatic actor, had a singing role in Born to Dance? Mr. Marx, what is your message for the world today? More big budget films, more cameo appearances by old stars, no, but what is your political and moral message? What message should I bring back with me to America? To America? To America say if they want a nice revolution, they should make more peasants. They don't have enough peasants in America. Close down the factories, disperse people from the city, make peasants, and you'll have a nice revolution. Excuse me, I've got to uh, go, I've, I've got to leave you because I've got to, to go audition for a walk-on part. Goodbye. <laughs>